Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Dr. Cedric Viner and I'm a professor here at the seminary in the New Testament department. And one of my responsibilities is as the director of the MA in Religion program. And I would like to talk to you about that program and give you a brief update. And I'm here in our new online teaching room, which we have set up over the last couple of months. And let me just show you what we have. So here we have our, uh, our interactive screen, which we can write on and we can play our PowerPoint. And uh, then over here we have a computer which controls everything. And then in front of me, I have a widescreen TV, which is absolutely ideal for watching the football, but actually we use it for Zoom where we can see our students. And uh, yesterday I started for the very first time uh, in this room to teach a course. We have nearly 40 students from Taiwan. Uh, most of them are in mainland China and they're all there in front of me. I stand here and the spirit takes over and the classes, they are going very well. And it allows us to recreate uh, as well as we can a normal classroom experience. And this has cost us probably about um, five to six thousand dollars. If you've got that amount rattling around in your pockets, please give me another five to six thousand and I will set up another room like this and we can really improve how we deliver our online education. Let me tell you about um, where we deliver our program. So we have a specialized program which is for students here on campus. These are students who are preparing for the PhD program. We have students who are online uh, and these do a slightly different program uh, and they at the moment only have the option of taking a concentration in church leadership and we found that that is a little restrictive so we're trying to broaden the types of students we attract and to include hopefully in the future new concentrations in global mission and Jewish Christian studies which will be delivered online. And then finally, let me tell you as to why our program is so important. And I'm just giving you one example. Um, we also deliver our program in seven sites around the world. And let me rattle them off, and uh, I need my fingers for this so I don't forget any of them. They're all uh, my little sheep and I'm their shepherd. And uh, the first we have is in Russia. We have Poland, Romania, Ukraine, and then we move around to the other side of the world. We have Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Thailand. And really, we are a program that really makes a loss. <laughs> uh, we are delivering a, a program to these sites where we're not covering our costs. This is our act of service, our act of love to the global church. We're helping places in the world where maybe they don't have as many resources as we do. And it's our privilege to deliver our program and to help the church. Uh, strengthen it in these places and also to make sure that we're encouraging church unity and that our pastors around the world are exposed to uh, a good quality education which is affirming of our Adventist identity. Let me share with you finally uh, a project which uh, when I first heard about it just sort of thrilled my heart. So we are running uh, programs in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. And the majority of these students actually come from mainland China, where they're not able to deliver regular pastoral education due to restrictions. So what we have, we have uh, a good sort of 30, 40, 50 students in these two programs, and um, they are doing our, our program in order to function in China as professors to teach their pastors there, at least up to BA theology level. We have uh, around about 5,000 pastors in China, and uh, the vast majority of them have not had formal pastoral education. And this is uh, a concern because uh, without that, there's a tendency that you can lose your cohesiveness uh, as a church and um, our unity can be put under pressure. So we are looking to use our students to go in China and to uh, help their pastors and to educate them up to at least a BA level. And we're working with the Chinese Mission uh, Union on this. Um, and um, uh, if I'm allowed just a minute of your time to give a final appeal, uh, it would be this. Um, <clears throat> if that is 
a project that you could support. This is what I need. Uh, at the moment, my, pro my program makes a loss. We are a subsidized program. We function at the behest and the generosity of others. And uh, that's partly why we've produced this room to cut our travel costs. Uh, but this is what it costs to make one of our programs viable in the long term. If we were to support Hong Kong or Taiwan with an endowment, we would need around about $100,000. And that would mean that we could run our program in one of these sites really for as far as I can see the foreseeable future. And uh, that's um, uh, a project which I would place on your heart and um, out of concern for the development of our brothers and sisters in China, I would ask that you give that uh, good consideration. So thank you for your time. And um, we just pray that God will use our professors here and our administrators to help strengthen our church around the world. And it's a privilege to be of service in this capacity. God bless. Hi, my name is David Sedlacek and I'm the coordinator of the First the Blade Ministry right here in the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary. You know, we have many families here in the seminary. Some of them come from overseas to do their studies here. Some are from this country. Husbands, wives, many times children. And, and many times what we've found in the past as we've talked to seminary student families is they have difficulty making connections. Sometimes, for example, if you're an immigrant, uh, especially a spouse who doesn't have a visa where you can work, you're, you're kind of stuck at home and it's lonely and you might have to watch the children if you have children and it gets pretty isolating. Well, First the Blade is a ministry to seminary student families where we try to intervene in that particular uh, problem that they have. We try to build connections between families. We try to resource families, let people know where things are, you know, like for food and, and a connection with financial resources and other things that can do to help them support their journey here in the seminary. That is something really important that we try to do in creative ways with First the Blade. Particularly now, since we're, we're involved in COVID-19, we have to find very creative ways to, to go ahead and, and build those connections. But one of the other things that is really important that First the Blade does is we provide financial help for seminary student families to have their children go to Christian education at our Adventist schools. You know, many times immigrant families, even families who are not sponsored and so forth, have a really hard time finding money to have their children involved in Christian education. Here in the seminary, we see that as being so important to anchor our children in Christian education. So we have created a way through donations to have um, uh, a way to fund our children to go to um, our Christian schools in the area, not just uh, Ruth Murdoch Elementary or, Ad, you know, or, or our Adventist Academy here on campus, but to any of our Christian schools. And so if you're interested in helping with that, it's our First the Blade um, ministry. You can get it through the development office at Andrews University, go onto the website for Andrews Giving, and you'll find there a link to First the Blade so that you can make donations to help us. Our goal is that no child of any seminary student family will be neglected, will be unable to involve to be involved in Christian education. We want everyone to, be, to have that opportunity if, if that's what they so desire. We would love for you to join us on this journey and to help support our seminary student families to get their children involved in Christian education. in the city of Rome, in front of the church Santa Prasetti. It is a beautiful church that was rebuilt in the 9th century by Pope Pascal. 
What's important of this church is that Pope Pascal, he built a little chapel and he overlaid it with beautiful mosaics, the best mosaics of the entire realm of the century. And on it has a picture of his mother and has her name, but also it gives the title that she had in the church. It says Episcopa, which would stand today for Bishop. We don't know if the word was used as the same way, but that for sure tells us that she had some kind of role in the church that was important for this community. I sat in those very classrooms at the feet of some of the brightest minds in our faith community. I'm an elementary school teacher and this is a place I never thought I would be. I don't regret a moment for having left the professional life that I had in management consulting. As a theology student, I thought I was ready, I was equipped, I was prepared. But the seminary taught me that the issues were larger than I expected. There's a lot of different experiences you can have. There's trips everywhere you get to take. Been able to engage in many different forms of ministry and evangelism. We live in a world now where specialization is the key. Everybody is specializing. They're raising the bar on their skills. They're raising the bar on their knowledge. And going forth and doing something good for Jesus. And my experience at seminary has been a wonderful experience of getting to know Jesus better and getting to know myself better. What I found here were professors that helped me think critically. And now, leaving the seminary, I feel convicted, I feel ready, I have a great understanding of my mission and my calling. Look, when I was a student here, I had no clue that I was going to be pastoring this church behind me. But that's the Master of Divinity for you. It will prepare you for wherever God calls you. Diving deeper into God's Word, into theology, and understanding more clearly the things of God and the things of theology and philosophy so as to better be able to share with others. Shouldn't we be as benchmarked as high as we can be academically and intellectually? Being here on an everyday basis has given me the opportunity to interact with people coming from a similar background, but as well as to speak with professors. And the people here that we meet from all over the world are such great Christian friends to have. But I think what makes me love this place even more is the passion that I found in the professors. That gave me something like a, it spurred me on to to see where God has called me to in missions and where that fits in my life. And I would invite anyone to commit their lives to the seminary, coming here to study and allow themselves under the influence of the Spirit to see what God has in store for them. And it will be worth it. You will grow so much and you won't regret it. And that will prepare you for the rest of your life. Come out and you will never regret it. This will be the best experience of your life. I'm inviting you, come on. Come to this place, invest yourself in God's kingdom business, and let's finish the work of Christ on earth.